Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today I have a little bit of a different video. The map we're on right now is GM Crot. Actually quite infamous in this channel's history for being one of the earlier, more expansive, and more terrifying maps that I've played. It was notable for being a, a spooky but fairly typical Gary's Mod underground facility exploration until it descended into utter madness in its secret lower levels. Well, I realized something after the Three Weird Maps video that I did to start off this year, and I realized it was something that I wanted to do more of. See, at the end of that, I did something kind of cool and actually fortified the spooky dollhouse in the middle of the dark plain. And I realized that I wasn't utilizing Gary's Mod to its full potential. I mean, sure, the explorations are fun, but there's so much more that can be done with this. And so today, I am facing some of my fears, and I'm going to be re-exploring this map, but with much, much more to think about. Uh, but I'll show a little bit more of that as we go. First things first, though, we are going to need to deliberately invoke the flashlight bug. Now, thus making this video feel like some kind of cursed ritual even more than it already is. So now even when this is away, uh, we should still be able to have this. And there we go, we've got a flashlight. Chris, why do you have an assault rifle? Well, I'll tell you what, that's not all I've got. I've got the safety Glock, I've got the VR M4A1, and the Benelli M3. All this is from the Arc VR weapons pack, which I've always had at my disposal. But I've never really had much use for the heavier firepower beyond the safety Glock itself, which I really use as more of a prop than anything. But that all changes today. See, today my goal is to face my fear of this map by making it about 1,200 times scarier and more dangerous, by combining it with one of the other scarier experiences I've had on this channel. You guys have wanted me to do Nextbox chases for quite a while now, and, well, on the Patreon, I did actually do a Nextbox chase on here with some friends, although that was more humorous. This is more in line with what this channel is about. Uh, but I've been vague about it enough. We are going to go into VJ Base, down into the Cry of Fear Resurgence pack, and we are activating the Monster Map Spawner. And as soon as I press this button, this map with its AI nodes will start spawning at random intervals, random types of monster from the wide variety present in Cry of Fear and I believe Afraid of Monsters. As soon as I do this, this whole map goes to a heck in a handbasket and I haven't tested this, so I have no idea how it's going to go. The monsters available to this spawner are varied, horrifying, and I don't know what most of them are, so I'm sure there will be times where I'm caught completely off guard. In other words, it's the cry of fear experience, only down in a dark Soviet bunker. To be totally honest, I don't really have a plan for where this is going to end. All I know is that my goal is to drive myself further and further downward into the depths of this place. Wish me luck. Oh! Oh! What? 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 What, what is this? What is this? Uh. Okay, we might have to start this again. I did not last long. All right, take two. But uh, this time, perhaps we'll try and keep on the move. Thankfully that time we got a more conventional enemy, but I'm thinking these things might take a lot of punch, so we should probably top off our ammo where we can. Oh no, the store doesn't want to open. Up. Oh. Drop, please. Okay. Uh, maybe we need empty hands? There we go. Okay. Close it behind us. Come on, close. Uh. Okay, maybe that'll buy us some time. I think. I always talk about the soft cover, things like blinds and leaves, things that uh, things can potentially come through but that we can't see through. A big deal from what I know about Cry of Fear is that uh, these monsters have some very 
unique sounds, so I think keeping an ear out in these dark environments, it's going to be absolutely necessary. Oh, I really feel how tiny and cramped this elevator is. My hands are having issues. I don't see anything just yet. Up. Oh! oh! Okay, so the Coneheads, as I shall dub them, appear to be the enemy of the hour right now. Despawning soon after death. Oh yeah, we're back. <laughs> this was a cool idea. You know, I actually tried something like this about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, on RP Asheville. But unfortunately I had to ditch that one due to performance issues. I didn't actually record too long. I Once I realized how poorly it was performing, I just kind of stopped the video. Now these two-handed weapons are something I don't have a ton of experience with in VR. I'm worried the shotgun might be too slow and unwieldy in a bad situation. But enough time has passed that I don't know this map all that well. I feel like I'd have a very difficult time actually getting where I need to go. Then again, we're reaching rail tracks very, very early. And I see something hiding behind that thing over there. And I can hear you now, too. Let's take this wide so that we can see where we're going and what's around us. <laughs> it feels like I'm playing a VR version of the first Resident Evil movie. Let's make sure nothing comes from there. Where is it at? Gotcha! Oh, I am so happy that worked. I can't even tell what you look like. But man, never has staring into the darkness been so tense an experience. But are we actually here already? Wow! I did not expect to reach here so soon. I think this is actually the... I'm tempted to go back up and go around the other way just to make this a little bit more of a challenge. Oh, God help me, I'm actually going to do it. God, this is so dumb. Actually, can we use this elevator? Where does this take us? Okay, now let's make absolutely sure we're ready on the draw. Stakes feel entirely different when you're actually here. Okay, now it's a bit more of a fair fight. I've handicapped myself by not rushing straight to the end. Hmm. I can't tell if I can hear something or not. I'm also worried about the spawns. I mean, I'm glad I'm not just a wash in them all the time. But I'm worried that it might spawn a few, and then they'll, they won't be in places where I am, and because I'm not killing them, it's not spawning more. Howdy there. Oh man, yeah, I look cool holding this thing. I don't know, man. There's just something different about walking down these hallways slowly in a patrol. Gun in hand and knowing that there might actually be something out here. I'll tell you what, I'm not actually at all sure how this works. If I spawn a bunch more of these, will it start spawning like three or four times as many enemies? Or something. Come on, you. You don't seem to have spotted me yet. Whoa! Uh, what's that on your cap? Are you... Wait. Mario? Wrong game, bud. Oh! Okay, yeah, things are starting to pick up a little bit. 
I think maybe you could have heard me. What the heck are you? I just heard like the squeak of the chair and then... Oh, your head is still twitching. Okay, this is scary again. And we should probably get moving now. Remember, we gotta keep an eye out in all directions. Question is, which way do we want to go? Well, we can jump down that elevator shaft. At that height, it doesn't really seem like a good idea. I have to say, though, wielding this shotgun against the forces of darkness, it makes me feel like uh, Ving Rhames in the Dawn of the Dead remake. Pretty cool. But we can't get out through here. No, this is a dead end. Huh, it's one of these mysterious silos, is it? Uh, actually, actually, I do remember this. Yep, this should lead back to that funny reception area. This always stuck out to me, but... I'm not seeing any more buddies. I'm really worried that it's uh, putting the monster distribution a bit too close to the surface right now. Because I'm not seeing too many down here, only in the wider areas. So I wonder what'll happen if we call the elevator? This might just end up bringing us back to the surface, which actually might be a real bad place to be, given all the monster map spawners we've been spamming. And to be honest, I'm not sure if it actually counts more than one at a time, but I gotta be prepared for all possibilities, right? Just my luck that I would find the entrance to the underground and never be able to find it again. Ah! Whoa! Okay, you took a lot of punishment. Come on, go ow! Oh, you one hit me! Okay, yeah, so they 100% are congregating on the surface. And one major complication, which I've discovered now, is that uh, they'll swarm you immediately, and it actually takes a long time to load up all these weapons to prepare ourselves. An opportunity which we do not have on our own. I think there's a way, though, for us to set our own spawn points. Run for it! Just forget these guys! Oh, there's so many. This way, this way, this way, keep hopping. Kite! Look at them all! Yep, screw it! Screw it! Oh, we can't do this. No, how are you not... I'm not sure I can rack this thing. I'm not sure I can rack this thing while I'm sprinting. So you just gotta keep it moving. I wanna kill a bunch of you so that it'll spawn more of you. That doesn't seem to be working out in our favor. Come on. Oh, you can open doors! Ow! What just exploded? Okay, Ugh. problem is you guys are actually really quite tough. And these guns do not have excellent mag capacity. All I can do is try and take pot shots and hope this works out for me. These things certainly do a lot more damage than the default Half-Life weapons, but it still may not be enough for me. Okay. Running is gonna be a valuable tool right now. Back around the other way. And careful what you wish for, huh? I was getting annoyed that it wasn't spawning enough of them. But now maybe we've killed enough. Maybe we've killed enough that they'll start appearing elsewhere. No, you don't. Unless we're gonna end up exposing ourselves to you by going through. Yeah, you know, we should probably just make sure you're dead. I mean, that just seems safer for all involved. Ow! What? Whoa! Where did you come from? Wrong shotgun, but we're not going to worry about that. We are going to worry about the space behind us. Okay. Now, the problem we're experiencing here 
it does take a long time to load all this stuff up when we die, and we are very, very fragile against these guys. I wanted occasional enemies, but we weren't even getting that. I just heard them. It is really dark. I actually... Need! Oh my god. You seem to be perpetually stuck staring at me from that corner. Good, let's use that. The problem is I just don't have the capacity to kill everything that's coming at me. This game was not built for VR, and it shows in every aspect. There may still be guys on here. There are. No! What is that thing? Die, please. Come on. Nope. Ow. Nope. That's what you get. We need to reload all of this stuff. Come on. We always need to be topping off. Always. I can already hear more of you. I don't even know what just killed me. I can already hear them. Yeah, that's what you get. Okay, but it looks like we're back on track. Okay, I am going to start taking this much more seriously. Now, what a battle it was just to even get down here. Where, I don't know if there's like a place where I can set settings to control like the number and distribution and when it redistributes. I feel like I've played mods that had stuff like that, but I'm very new to VJ base. And now we can start getting into downstairs once again. Back where we started, but trying to learn from past problems. Although if all of this is anything to go by, I really am guessing that they all just are all distributed in one place. See, I can't tell. Is that the sound of concrete crumbling? Or is that skittering footsteps on the other side of the door in the darkness? Guess we'll find out. It's gone very quiet. Why? I don't understand why we can't open doors with this. Whoa! Okay, there's stuff! There's stuff! There's a lot of stuff! All right, we have a fresh start, and I'm gonna try with three monster map spawners. I don't know how many were there. I don't even know if they were really doing anything by stacking like that, but I do know that I tried placing a lot more than three. So one, two, three. Because what I always really wanted was like, you know, occasional enemies, not huge hordes that I am powerless to do anything about. Haven't seen any yet. But I already hear them. Oh, go. Let's keep going. Okay, this is more the experience I was hoping for. Whew. Frantic in the moment, but not necessarily insurmountable, and it makes those moments where you think you see something out of the corner of your eye all the more impactful. In this case, the edge of this box in front of the lit doorway. Oh, that looks nice. Imagine just a tidal wave of these things pouring over the edge of that staircase. Right, I'm still determined to face my fear, though. can't tell what's them and what isn't. And there's so many different enemy types that, like, you know, we've been fortunate that we've been mostly seeing the same few. Uh. Oh! They can spawn behind us at any time, too. I need, like, a tremendous amount more health! Come on! Ow! Oh my god, it's so hard to aim. VJ base allows you to place a player spawn point right here. 
So we'll do that. And man, I definitely, I definitely need a moment to regroup. Because we no-clipped down here, I can actually still hear the sounds of the storm outside. The, uh, the soundscapes are all screwed up. There they are. I keep forgetting I have to remove the magazine from this one. You don't from the M4. Anybody else? I should make the corpses last longer. Like, disable physics. I'm kind of starting to come to think of this as a test run. Because I really do believe in this idea. Like, even though I'm having a lot of problems, and the limitations of Gmod VR are really showing themselves once you add gameplay, I'm still finding it really, really cool. Like I said, limitations. I wonder if headshots matter. Okay. As soon as things start to open up, that's when we need to be more careful. I think they might start tracking once some um, past open doors or doors that they couldn't get by on their own. But again, can't be 100% sure of that. I also can't be 100% sure of which path will take me downward. Because it seems to keep rising up and down in some really unnecessary ways. AK seems to be one of the better weapons. Decent mag capacity and a lot of damage output. Safety Glock. Tried and true. And we're just right back here. Wait, maybe it was this? Well, it works. But remember, they can spawn on elevators, and they will be moved by them as well. One complication I've also noticed with these two-handed weapons, which to be fair, I don't have to use them two-handed, is it, it aims really weirdly. Like, I'm actually, when I hold it like this, you'd think I would be aiming it with the left hand, but I actually have to aim it with the right, or it'll hardly move. Oh! I think you're dead. I mean, you're so ugly, it can be kind of hard to tell. Something else I'm realizing is I need a, a huge amount more health than what I actually have, so... Maybe there is something I can do about it. First, we gotta gun down Mario running out of the darkness. Stop interrupting, please. I'm trying to get myself some stuff. Yeah, they're all just coming this way. A big part of the problem is just not having the ammo to do anything about it if they all start coming at me in huge numbers. Never say I don't accommodate the disabled. Yeah, here's my solution to the health problem. Whole bunch of bouncy balls, why are you not working? There we go. Well, that's one way f to call it working. All right, the consumption of a healthy diet of bouncy balls has given me, hopefully, a bit more survivability. Of course, not being able to use doors as needed is a huge hit in the other direction. And I can already... Yep, there they are. Why you opted to go around, I have no idea. But here they all come, yep. Okay, this is gonna be absolutely impenetrable. So screw this, this, <laughs> this just isn't working. Yep, forget it. All right, we'll try this one more time and then call it. Mostly by doing a whole lot of running, just so we can see this place. I think 
they definitely hear gunshots. Look at that. Uh, whoop. And let's keep going. <laughs> now we're just in a mad dash to see everything that's here, like a streaker on a football field. Except this place has got quite a tight security team. Oh no. The last thing we want is to get cornered! Come on, come, jump, jump, jump! Uh, this is so unresponsive, it's unbelievable. And we're dead. So that was my attempt at fighting NPCs on GM Crot. And while it was, honestly, a lot more frustration and work than actual gameplay, I think it's a pretty solid proof of concept. I think there's probably more that can be done with this idea to make it a much smoother experience for the player. But in order to explore that, maybe we'll take a look and see what went wrong in this and what went right. So first of all, what went right? The thing that actually spurs you to want to improve this in the first place. Exploring these maps is a vastly different experience when you know there could be threats around any corner. And especially with Cry of Fear when you don't know what those threats could be. The dynamic nature of Gary's Mod, meaning you get scenes like this and knowing that all of it does in fact tell a story. The fact that this being Gary's Mod, it truly can be done with any mix and match combo of mods and, I guess, premises that you like. It really feels like survival horror in VR when you're walking through these places and something pops out and you just mag dump at it, or you decide to run away or jump over a railing, or you're frantically fumbling with like your magazine to try and load that gun before the thing gets over to you. When you hear that noise behind you and see the demonic looking thing in the wheelchair just slowly grinding around the corner. It was so, so memorable. And that's why I want to pursue this more. But there were some things that held it back. First of all, the Gmod VR weaponry, while extremely cool on something that was never meant to support this kind of thing, is pretty clunky. I spent a lot of time just grabbing for mags, trying to get the hand to grab the right part of the gun to do the reloading. And I wasn't able to open doors while I was holding VR weapons. Then there's the matter of the flashlight, which I guess I could get around not being able to hold a flashlight and a weapon at the same time by exploiting the flashlight bug, having the customizable flashlight out, picking up a physics object, and then utilizing the fact that it stays attached to your hand. So the flashlight itself wasn't much of an issue, but it compounds an already existing problem where the player is very fragile against these NPCs. And if you die, it's actually a fairly lengthy process to get back in the game. Because you go back to your spawn point, I have to take off the headset, walk over, press escape on the keyboard, and then put the headset back on and load up each of these weapons all over again. It's only then that I can then find a different physics object and do the flashlight bug on purpose. And so every time I died there, it took a while for me to get back in the fight. Another major problem I had is the distribution of enemies. And I can't really fairly assess this, I think, without a better understanding of how VJ Base actually works. See, the first time I tried this, I came down here and felt like I wasn't really encountering much of anything. Early on, I thought it was really, really cool how, you know, every once in a while something would pop out at me or I'd see something twitching off in the distance. And those encounters were cool but I felt like it wasn't quite enough. I spammed a whole bunch of spawners, and I don't know if those actually affect anything. Like, I don't know if they stack. What I do know is that it seemed like enemies were starting to all sort of pool together, and any time I fired a shot, it would alert them all, and just everything on the map would come rushing to me all at once in one big tidal wave. And I don't know if there's a way to correct that. I don't know if there's, like, parameters I can change for how widely spread they are, how many can be on the map at a given time, or if they'll redistribute based on my current location. But if anybody knows any more about that, people who I'm sure have a lot more experience with this than I do, I would love to hear from you. Because this is Gary's Mod, and if there's one thing I know about it, it's that a lot of these issues are probably fixable somewhere. Maybe even within the context of the mods as they exist right now. It may have been janky, but this whole experience was definitely cool enough that I see the potential and I really believe in the idea. 
And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try any of these mods out for yourself, uh, those links will be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.